Hey, this is Brianna for Unsigned and Unleashed, and I'm here with Riding Out in New York City. How are you guys today? Doing good. New York. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Traffic. <laughs> Alright, awesome. So you guys were on tour with the Ghost Inside who's headlining um, Straight From The Path and Stick To Your Guns. So what's it been like dealing with um, the Ghost Inside fans? Like how have the crowds been reacting to your set so far? Real awesome and oblivious to getting their faces stepped on. <laughs> yeah. Most of the kids that come out to see the Ghost Inside Either most likely have never heard of us, so um, we're kind of an aggressive band, yeah, and kind of all over the place. So like you know, I've had the problem where girls or or younger you know kids are up front at the stage just to like hold the spot so they can wait for Ghost Inside to they play, yeah. not knowing who we are. And I'm like doing my thing, and I'm just like <laughs> stepping on these kids' fingers and like accidentally hitting him in the face, you know, just getting real aggressive and like, they don't seem too bummed, but they just seem like surprised at like yeah. our sound and like what we're doing as like a hardcore band. Um, so what makes you guys so cut out for the, for the road life? Uh, for the road life? Yes. It's, uh, you can ask most people that are in a van, it becomes very addicting. Mm -hmm. You, you have less responsibility, it's almost just as, Trying to preserve the immaturity as long as you can. You know, it, it, you, you don't feel tied down to anything like you do at home. Like responsibilities are a lot thinner. You know, you're just worrying about eating and just going to the next town. You know, um, we still have priorities at home, and yeah, it, it, the stress builds every once in a while. But you know, we're at home for two weeks and we want to get back on the road. We're tired of it. You know, yeah. it's addicting, is what it is. I understand. Alright, so overall I kind of feel like the world we live in doesn't really have a place for people to be like weak or like unhappy and stuff like that, especially if you come from like a bad neighborhood, it's not necessarily something that's, you know, understood. So hardcore is definitely an outlet for you guys and also for the fans. So overall, how does being in an aggressive band help you guys and what's it like to see kids come out to shows and have them be like as angry as you are, if not more? Benji? A, a positive outlet to it that helps us cope with shit that we're dealing with yeah. day to day basis. And, uh, it helps us help kids release their inner anger too, with the stress off their chest. Yeah. It's cool to see that shit help, help kids out. Most kids come because wherever they're from isn't cutting it, you know? Yeah. It's just not helping them out, whether it's home or school or their friends. It's just, they're just not getting what they need. And, or they're just getting too much shit from all those places that they need to come and let loose. It's kind of like a rough housing. Yeah. There's a fun aspect to it and a very appealing thing to like hardcore mm -hmm. and punk rock. And then there's the violent aspect to it. Like you just see people just swinging, diving, going off, yelling at each other's faces. Everybody's completely angry and almost hysterical, but at the same time, there's like a common awareness of its positive aggression. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like I guess I could compare it to a fo football game. It's it's companionship and to just release to understand one another. It's like you know, I'm gonna hit my friend in the face. We're going off. This part's cool. I'm a mosh to this. You know, he's gonna dive on me. And nothing's personal, everything's just fun and just the energy just gets thrown up at a whole other level and everybody feeds off each other, you know, nothing nothing hostile uh, but very violent at the same time, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, it definitely does. Okay, so um, this kind of goes with the last question. Um, when you have kids come up to you and they say that your music has sort of touched you, touched them rather, and they might feel like, like they sort of idolize you and they think that you know, you understand them and they put you onto another level and I know like some bands and some artists really have an issue with that, like they don't want to be just like this band, they want to be a person, you know, so have you guys had to deal with that and if so, how do you do it? That's definitely happened on, on, on this tour where I, I've gotten kids say, hey, 
this song really did so much for me. I, I admire you and I look up to you. I, I idolize you sometimes. And like, we're, we're just like anybody else. We're a bunch of fucking high school rejects, you know, a bunch of skaters. Like, you know, we, we don't know what we're doing half the time. We just want to enjoy ourselves. And I, I appreciate the, the, you know, the recognition and uh, of everything we do and what we're trying to do. But it's to be put on, on like some sort of pedestal is almost, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but it's just like, I'm yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, we're not, a, like, it's weird. We're not a use, uh, used to it. We don't, we're, we don't think we're better than anybody else. Um, we're just as imperfect as the next person, you know, just trying to get by. Somebody says like, oh, like I, I never tried to be a role model. I don't think I'm a good role model to begin with. Half my, half my songs aren't telling people what to do. It's just sharing a story I had, you know. Yeah. It's just a personal experience. It's like, hey, this is how I dealt with it. And nine times out of ten, the the song ends in a very violent manner, and that's not the most positive um, message to send somebody. So the fact that somebody's like, oh. I, I, I idolize you when I'm writing a song about stabbing my stepfather, you know, like, yeah. it's, 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 it throws me off, but at the same time, I can't be like, oh, you know, you're, you're fucking weird, oh, you, can, you can't do that, you, you, you gotta realize some complete strangers admire you for what you do, yeah. someone you've never met is looking up to you for expressing yourself, and I appreciate that to the fullest extent, it's just, I'm just not adjusted to it yet, I guess. I understand. You know? Yeah. Pretty much this whole tour has been real awkward and overwhelming at the same time because half the crowd is just finding out about this band and I'm just saying this is finding something new, reading a book, getting into it. I just have people tell me, hey, good show. That's awesome. <laughs> you can't complain about that. Uh, yes. I don't get the whole, you changed my life. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet. Alright, so I know you guys have worked with um, 6131 Records for a while now. Um, what's that relationship been like? That's actually a pretty cool relationship because there's no contracts, there's no deals, it's just a friend, a friend and a handshake. And apparently that's all it takes because he's done, Joey has done right by us ever since. He does whatever he can, when he can, as fast as he can, you know, promoting the record, paying for our recordings, taking us out to lunch, you know, pushing our band, you know, just helping us in every way possible. And so like, it, it's cool because we've definitely have gotten offers from other labels, um, especially on this last record, but we all have we have always wanted to be a West Coast band and it only felt right to be on a West Coast label. So it six one three one is awesome. But I told them if Epitaph ever came out of <laughs> door, it's just childhood dreams, you know what I mean? Okay. Epitaph, Epitaph and Dream. Alright, you heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here. Yes. Sweet. Alright, so let's talk about the new record for a second, wrong way. Um, you guys just uh, um, you streamed a new song from it, the shootout, which is really awesome. So, what can fans expect from the album, lyrically, where is the inspiration coming from, and how does it compare to Street Pro? Street Pro was the first time I ever uh, wrote lyrically on the record. Because um, before that, we had, we had another singer, our friend Mike, and I played guitar at the time. Um, and he just he couldn't do it anymore, so we were kind of stuck in a rut, and we are like, alright, well, let's see, let's see if I'm capable of, you know holding up the mantle, and um, I just dove in and I opened up my life, and I felt like, because that's, that's some of my favorite records where, where bands just expose them every part of themselves, you know, become vulnerable, um, so I was like, you know what, fuck it, like, I have a lot of things to get off my mind, off my chest, so I did, but on this last record, everything became more angry, I was looking at people in my life and aspects of my life and it's just an A record from like front to finish. Which ironically, the shootout is the least angriest song on the record. And it's more of a love song. Um, which is 
definitely like out of my element, but you know, I just kind of do what I want, what I want. So it didn't didn't matter. But the whole other record, just like I, like I said earlier, there's parts of like you know, family members getting stabbed. There's parts of like uh, songs about me and my brother, you know, do, doing what we have to do in like a violent atmosphere. There's parts where I'm just tired of people running their mouths, you know. Or all my whole life, people pretended they they knew where we were coming from when they just w wanted us to talk fast, just so they can have their time to speak, just so they can, you know, oh, here, let me get on my high horse and make judgments about your life, you know, like. And then there's just songs where like I'm so angry that I have to grow up, and I don't want to like like let go. Yeah. So the whole the whole record is a lot angrier than Street Bro. I know that's it's the sequel. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I look at it, like a trilogy, and we're at, we're at the sequel. All right. The so. next record is he's gonna write behind bars. <laughs> All right. Maybe way better. <laughs> Sweet. So um, the last question is kind of a weird one. It's how does your hometown influence who you are today? Oh, it influences everything. It, yeah, the West Coast, Los Angeles. I mean, the, the both covers of our albums are in our hometown. Yeah. Our hometown so. Each each cover is like literally yards away from both homes where I've lived in that town. Like the first one is the corner of like the projects I lived in. We reached, not like last, a couple years ago where we got kicked out. Um, from the house that we were living in after we lived in the projects, so like that's it all. It all definitely like ties in with like the atmosphere of our town, the atmosphere of the record. If you notice, the cover of the record is darker than the than the street prop record. So that already just kind of just flows uh, right. And even even the riffs are like there's something darker about like the riffs. There's something more like fierce about the way we play the new songs. And even the structure and some of the like elements we added to it are definitely like suicidal, Pennywise, you know, even early suicidal tendencies, you know, like street punk stuff. And that all derives from like where we come from, you know, like Tanks from Compton, we're all from San Pedro, our drummer's from Torrance, that's, we're all thrown into that mix and like, it's just the roots that we tend to appreciate that come from like, uh, those streets and that sound, you know, like Los Angeles. So yeah, that's it. It affects our our record and our sound in one hundred percent, one hundred percent in every perfect way, I, I suppose, in every positive way. So. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you guys for talking to me. No, no problem. Thanks for coming out. All right. For taking your time. Oh, no problem. Okay, and be sure to check out Wrong Way, which comes out on May seventh through six one three one records. Yeah. 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 yeah.